ladies and gentlemen, if, if I could have your attention, please. If you could all gather around, we'll have a brief program and some remarks. If I could have your attention, please. Folks, if I could have... If I could have your attention, please. I'd like to welcome everybody. I'm Bob Howard, president of the Greenville Tech Foundation, and thank you so much for coming and being with us tonight. We're going to have a brief program, but I want to encourage you to continue, please, to enjoy the food and the beverages uh, at, during our program, please. I think you'll be really, really interested in what we have tonight. I first want to begin the evening by thanking you because we are here because of you and because of what you have done for Greenville Tech and for the Greenville Tech Foundation. And we decided that we would show you the results of what you are doing and have done for us in the form of the actual people who are actually teaching and the actual people who are actually studying, some of them, uh, our courses at, at, at Greenville Tech. And in doing so, preparing themselves for better lives and better jobs and doing so much for the economic health of Greenville, South Carolina, and of the whole upstate. Uh, before introducing our speakers, I want to recognize a few people. I'd like to recognize Dr. Keith Miller, our president of Greenville Technical College, who will be speaking later on, but Dr. Miller is, is, is back here. Welcome, and thank you for being with us. I also want to recognize uh, Jenny Johnson, the chair, there she is, of the Area Commission, and thank you for your work with us. I'd like to also Hunter Howard, chair of the Greenville Tech Foundation, one of my 35 bosses. And so thank you and all of the other 34 board members. And I'd like, if you're a member of the Greenville Tech uh, Area Commission or the Greenville, Technical, uh, Greenville Tech Foundation board, would you please raise your hand and I'd like to thank you with a round of applause for your show. I'd now like to recognize uh, all of the staff of the Greenville Tech Foundation and the staff of Greenville Technical College, the faculty of Greenville Technical College. If you're in any of these groups, would you please raise your hand and be recognized? And the final person that I'd like just to uh, stand up for just a moment, he's going to faint when I do this because he doesn't know that I'm going to do this. Simon Foster, would you stand up? And now I'm going to tell you, I didn't meet this guy until a week ago. And I, I learned his story and I invited him to breakfast the other day just to learn more because, you know, I'm, I'm from Greenville and I love Greenville and I love people who choose Greenville. And here is his story and I just want to tell you in two sentences his story and ask you just to introduce yourself and tell him he made a good choice after this meeting. <laughs> He was in Ann Arbor, Michigan. He's born in Ann Arbor. He's a graduate of, the, of the, the University of Michigan. He'd never been to Greenville, South Carolina. And some, he, he, his, something happened with wherever he was, was working. And he had some time off before looking for a job. And a friend of his said, you know, you ought to go to Greenville, South Carolina and look at that city. It's really an incredible city. And he had some time off. Came in here for two weeks. And he said, I'm going to move there. And he works for the Governor's School for the Arts. And so if you think that's a good decision, see him after the meeting. So, so I just was charmed by that story and I thought you would like to meet him also. Uh, I want to introduce our first speaker who is David Owens and we're really happy to have him. His face may be familiar and the reason his face is familiar, if you go to the Greenville Tech Foundation website, we have these five faces of graduates that have done well that are always flashing through and he's one of the five flashing through. So. Uh, he's, he's famous due to our, our, our website, but he is one of our alums. He studied mechanical engineering technology and also was in our university transfer program. He's a great supporter, a great entrepreneur, and David, if you'd please come up and just share a few remarks. Well, thank you for those kind words. I don't know that I can live up to all that, but I, I sure will try. When Les Gardner asked me to speak on behalf of Greenville Tech and the Foundation, he said, yeah, give me two or three minutes. And I said, God, two or three minutes in front of a lot of people, and I'm not a public speaker. I said, I don't know, Les, I don't know if I can do that or not. But when you're passionate about something, and when you believe in something, I could go on. And when I look around this room and I see business people that, that I interact with, and I see the people that from my hometown, I'm from Greer, 
Greer. <laughs> but I, I just see success stories, and I see things that, that Greenville Tech has done, and I see how Greenville Tech has touched lives. And it certainly touched my life 32 years ago. When I graduated from high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And Greenville Tech afforded me a chance to, to go and work, and I worked at J.A. Serene. Many of you will know J.A. Serene, which is Jacobs Engineering now. But uh, I worked there part-time, went to Greenville Tech, got my degree in mechanical engineering technology, took some transfer courses. It gave me the essentials. It gave me the things, the background, the, the basis that, that prepared me to, to go into business. Well, I went into a small mechanical contracting business, been there 32 years. I started when I was 10, though. <laughs> but, no, really. But I've um, been there 32 years. But it gave me a, it gave me the background. It gave me the the know-how to make things work. I work with my hands a lot. But it also gave me the opportunity that after working there for 18 years, I was able to buy the company. And I bought the company. Many of you know Lynn, I don't know if you know Lynn Hendricks or not, but uh, he's a member here at the Country Club. But anyway. He, Used to work for Wonder Wheel a long time ago, but uh, and he was an entrepreneur himself. But anyway, I bought a company from Lynn Hendricks, and he was a great mentor, just to work with. But I had the background, I had the the things that Greenville Tech taught me. So it's it's just a small success story like that. But my family has been touched by it. My oldest daughter is a single mom. She's put herself through the nursing program here. She'll graduate in August. She's done all her own. That's not the best part. The best part is she said, Dad, I didn't do that, I promise. <laughs> she said, Dad, you, you get hung up in your own little world and she's going to school and doing this and she works at Rear Memorial Hospital in her, in her spare time just to make ends meet. And she says, am I doing something? Okay, all right, anyway. But the success story of that is, she sat me down one day and she said, you know, it's the work ethic that I have, Dad. But in, I, when I get through with tech in August of this year, I've got three more courses and I'll have my BS degree from Clemson University. Yeah. So she's done it, she's did it. My youngest daughter, she's taken some summer school classes just to get ahead. She's at Anderson University. So it's, it's a college that works and it, it touches the whole community. And when I think of a community college, it just, it is much bigger than a community college. But it's just those little things like that that, that I can tell people about. And I could go on and on and on. I think my three minutes is up. But anyway, if you if you like to know anything else about and I'm on several of the advisory boards here at Greenville Tech, and uh, I'm amazed at what the technology has done over 30-something years. They just keep on and on. And the vision that Tom Barton had and the vision that, that Dr. Miller has now, it's, it's amazing to see. What, what Greenville Tech has done and what it will do. But thank you for the opportunity. I'll use this, I guess, until we get this figured out. And you know, every year at these things, we let you meet some of our students. We're so proud of those students. And we decided this year that in addition to letting you meet some of our students and our, our alums, we'd let you meet some of the people, or at least one of the people uh, that teaches these people and we'd like we're featuring tonight Dr. Norm Rayford. Norm if you'd come on up I'll tell you about Norm. Norm uh, is a professor of history at Greenville Tech and he got his undergraduate degree from Lander University and both his master's and his PhD from the University of Virginia. Has been at Greenville Tech since 1974 is one of the most popular professors that we have and has uh, the distinction of being uh, one of the important teachers and an important factor in the life uh, and the education of Dr. Daniel Dreisbach, who uh, is the only Rhodes Scholar to come out of the South Carolina Technical College system, and it's uh, in large part due to, uh, due to Norm. And Norm, thank you. Thank you very much. HR tells me that I am now the longest serving faculty member at the college, 39 years. As you can imagine, I've seen an awful lot of dramatic changes in those 39 years. One of the most shocking and dramatic 
is how much hair I have lost <laughs> during that 39 years. And there's only a little fringe of gray uh, left around the sides. And Steve, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about myself here. <clears throat> More significantly, um, I think we might want to ask ourselves the question, what do we donors get when we give to Greenville Tech and to the Greenville Tech Foundation? And I would suggest to you that we get a part of a vision that is considerably larger than anything we can imagine. It's larger than Greenville, and it's larger than Greenville Tech, and it's larger than all of us in this room. It is a vision that was first <clears throat> brought to our attention by one of the youngest governors in the country, 37-year-old Ernest F. Hollings, in 1959, who looked around him and he said, this is bad, this is really bad, South Carolina, is one of the poorest states in the nation. It has poverty and it has hunger. And he said, we need to change that. And he said, one way to change it is by means of education. There were only two major, uh, two major ways of earning a living in South Carolina in 1959. One was by being a small scale farmer and the other was by being in textiles. Some of you may remember the sound of the bells and the whistles early in the morning when the first shift reported to the cotton mills. And look around you now, how many small farms do you see? And how many textile mills do you see? The few that are still standing are either condos, called lofts, or if they are still working, they're run by a, half, a, half, a small handful of people who are pushing buttons on highly mechanized uh, machines. So things have changed. Things have changed dramatically because a young governor had a vision and he said, by means of education, we need to enable the people of South Carolina to get the jobs for the future. It's almost like he foresaw that farms and textiles would go away. And Greenville Tech was the first of those 16 technical colleges that he envisioned. And where have we gone in the 39 years since then? We no longer are always at the top of the things that you don't want to be at the top of, the bad stuff. And we're no longer at the bottom of the list in the things that you don't want to be at the bottom of the list of. So we find that South Carolina is a much changed place, largely the result, I think, of the technical colleges. I don't think we can ever say enough about the impact of the technical colleges on this state. So what do we get? We get part of being a very large vision. A vision that has not only affected individual lives, as we have just heard, that's very important, that's excruciatingly important, but also part of a vision that has made this state attractive to employers who have now diversified our economy and who are attracted here because we have highly skilled and trained employees. But we are also part of a vision that has lifted the socioeconomic conditions of this state. In addition to that, we are the College of the Second Chance, as you just heard here. That was a phrase that Dr. Miller used in this very room two years ago when we honored Dr. Daniel Dreisbach. What do I mean by the second chance? Daniel made it clear. He never would have been able to go to college, period, had there not been a technical college just down the street with very affordable tuition, very conveniently located. We also are the college of the second chance for the people, as you have just heard, who decide that they want to change careers and come back and get a new career, a new profession, new training. Likewise, I have a personal connection. My daughter, one of my two daughters, after having gotten a liberal arts degree, started here at Greenville Tech, was out on her own for several years, then said, Dad, now I know what I want to do. <laughs> Maybe you've heard that too. And she said, I want to go into nursing, as in your situation. I said, that's great. She said, oh, by the way, though, I avoided all those math and science courses <laughs> that I should have been taking in pursuit of my liberal arts degree. My daughter finished at Greenville Tech last February, a year ago. She is now gainfully employed. So there's part of the illustration. Fathers love to hear when their children are gainfully employed, as you well know. <laughs> This is the second time around. <clears throat> but here we have a citizen who is now able to hold her head high that she is self-supporting. She is paying taxes like the rest of us. And that is part of the vision that we are buying into. So I, I want you to think of it as far larger than anything in this room. It's far larger than Greenville. It is our entire state. 
And now there is one other dramatic change I would like to see come about. That is, I would like for someone at Greenville Tech to come up with a program that will restore balding heads like mine to full, <laughs> curly, dark hair, but attained by some means other than hair transplants and toupees. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I've shown you what our graduates are like, I've shown you what our professors are like, and I want to now tell you what our students are like by showing you. I'd like to first introduce you to Amanda Black. Amanda is from Liberty, South Carolina, and is a recipient of the Greenville Health System Endowed Scholarship. And she's enrolled in the Respiratory Care Program and will graduate in May. All of these students, incidentally, are scholarship recipients from the donations that either the named people or that you have donated, so thank you. In 2009, I was faced with a difficult decision as I was laid off at the employer that I worked for for three years. I was a single mom of two kids, didn't have a lot of options, there's not a lot of jobs at that time that a lot of people were laying off. So I decided to go back to school. It took me that long to really decide what I really wanted to do and then to find a, a college that offered it. Greenville Tech was one of the few in the upstate that does offer a respiratory care program. And so it was naturally the first choice for me to do. It was easy to go through admissions. Everybody was there, very helpful. And then in 2010, in the spring is when I started. I entered into the respiratory care program in fall of 2011. And I'm now getting ready to graduate. So after that, I have three boards that I'm gonna have to pass to get through. Not, you know, it doesn't matter just having a degree. I'm gonna have to pass and get that licensure. But I hope that I will be at one of these hospitals in the upstate to work and to put back into the system. And I wanna thank all of you sponsors for what you do because without that scholarship, I would not have been able to continue to go through this program. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce Zachary Rausch. Zachary is a recipient of the Paula G. Wood Alumni Endowed Scholarship and is currently studying marketing. Thank you, and again, my name is Zachary Rausch, and I graduated in May of 2012 with an associate's degree in marketing and a certificate in marketing communications and another certificate in marketing in the nonprofit sector. And before I say anything else, I just want to say thank you so much for investing in my life. We hear a lot at Greenville Tech that it's a college that works, and it is. I wanted to share some of the few, a little bit with you about things that they focused on in my life that have made a difference and I believe will help make me successful throughout my career. A big thing that was focused on in the marketing program was communication, whether it's verbal, nonverbal, or written skills. And while I'm definitely not perfect, I have definitely seen the benefit and the change that has come in my life as I pursued my degree there. And I was, sorry. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit also about some of the teachers who made that difference. One of those was my speech teacher, Robin Zimmerman. And she's part of the reason I'm here tonight because when I was approached a couple weeks ago and asked to speak, my first inclination was, of course, to politely thank them and then say, no, thank you, because it's just not my thing. <laughs> but she might as well have been standing there listening to the phone call, because I knew what she would have said. You know, one of the first evenings in class, she looked at us, and when Robin Zimmerman looks at you, you know you're being looked at. She's got this very intense way of looking at you. And she had just finished telling us about her career and all that she has done with Greenville Hospital System and Greenville Tech. And then she said, every opportunity that came to me in life, I took. And she went on to encourage us to do the same thing. And so as I was on the phone, um, when they asked me to speak here tonight, I could hear her in my mind say, Zachary, this is an opportunity for you to improve your communication skills, and you need to take it. 
so I accept it. And there have been many other teachers, I think of Marty Flynn, who worked hard with me on my written skills. Um, when I first came to college, writing was not my favorite thing. And while I don't always enjoy it now, I definitely see the value in being able to communicate clearly with the written word. When I went to college, um, I'm the type of student who likes to get 100 on every test because if you do that, you don't have anything to worry about. Well, Marty blew that dream first night of class. <laughs> he said, I don't believe in hundreds. He said, nobody in life is perfect and you're not perfect. And you'll never get 100 in my class because I don't give those out. So I thought, well, I'll at least get a 99 or a 98 and we'll do as good as we can. The, I think the highest I ever got was a 98. And he had the habit of handing my test back. His were always essay tests, doesn't believe in anything else. And they'd have these little notes on them. And it usually read something like, Zachary, good point, but I believe you had more to say. Or you could have expounded upon something a little more. And those used to frustrate me. <laughs> because I would go to you know, prepare ahead of time for the test, think Marty's not going to say anything this time. I've got all my bases covered. And there'd still be one or two notes. Now after some hard work and his patience a couple semesters, I did manage to narrow those down a lot. And they did become a lot less frequent. But as I look back at what I gained at Greenville Tech, I'm so thankful for the teachers 